I watched, stood on the, the old Pycock School used to be up the main road and I was in stand at six and we all stood out on the road, on the fence and the band led the first lot past us and, and they'd come off the train at, at Pycock. There were a few, two or three trains brought them up and uh, we all just waved and they, some of them waved back but most of them were wondering where they were going to but they went to Mackay's. And uh, at any rate, uh, the, uh, I'll just add this little bit. In those days, I delivered the Evening Post in Pycock for a grocer by the name of Beckett. And the shop we did it from was the one that is at the north end of the platform uh, in Tilly Road, straight across from the north end of the platform. It, it, it's not a grocer's shop now. But at any rate, when I got down there at about quarter past three, half past three after school, there wasn't a biscuit, there wasn't a lolly, there wasn't an ice cream, there wasn't anything virtually. <laughs> and there wasn't for qu qu quite some time. <laughs> because some of the Marines had come across from the railway station and they just, being a small shop, they, they just skinned it, bought everything. Mm. Well, Cheese the whole lot. They really outnumbered you, didn't they? Oh, they <laughs> that was just the beginning. That's, that's just my beginning of what I know. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> well, that, that's true because when we arrived here, uh, I had been in American Samoa since April of 1942 and no social life or anything there, no ice cream shops. And then on to Guadalcanal and then here. And so when you're a year away from that, I, I've, uh, uh, um, Joe Nellis, I, I keep telling her, during the time I was in New Zealand, I think I ate a quarter ice cream a day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it didn't take them long to restock the shop, oh, admittedly. Fantastic. <laughs> You'd be a rich man. <laughs> so, uh, you, in the school there, to get to the school, you're pretty well going across the camp or around the no, camp gate. The, the camp was being built I, oh, I, that was Mackay. I, there no, in Mackay. I, I lived in Ocean Road, and my, well, with my father, and his house backed onto what is now the school ground. And I used to cut across the back and over and down across the rubble line to go to school. But the camp was being built then that year. It, it, well, either was, the Marines were in it towards the end of the year, yeah. uh, at the north end of it. Uh, that, that's Camp Pike yeah, Akariki, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. the one that took over the golf club. Just around the corner from... Uh, I, uh, do you know the, 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 the east end of the school grounds? Yeah. You, I used to go up along to the end of the pine trees, which there was a big row of pine trees yeah. there, and, over the, and straight down below that, towards the railway line, mm -hmm. it was part of the old golf course. Yeah was a cookhouse and a, 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 a storeroom and all the rest of it. And quite often, they gave me a meal. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you were at the right time, you could get something to eat. It might have been only a, you know, a, a, a bit of bread with some meat in it, but... <laughs> Claude, Claude you, you were working... There were three things, but the main thing was, as I mentioned earlier, I used to go into Wellington to go to college and then to work. And when I was going to college, coming out of the tunnel, seeing all the boats in the harbour. And a few days later, they were out in front of, just north of the f first creek at Pycockeriki Beach. Well, they were, well the, that's where they did their landing, but the boats were all along there. And in, we weren't allowed to go up during the day, but we were allowed to go up after five o'clock at night to have a look. I was in the surf club at that stage. There was quite a few of us used to go up and have a look. And what they didn't realise was that with the tides there were sandbars that formed in, and anybody that swum at Pycock Beach will know about the sandbars. Well, one night evening we went up and there were three landing barges on the sandbars stuck. Uh, on, just as the tide was coming in, sitting out of the sand was a, a seat like that and it was the back seat of a small bulldozer, which, if you know Pycock up Beach, if you wriggle your feet like that, you sink. Well, this bulldozer had sunk, 
and the only thing sticking out of the sand was the seat of it. They brought, I don't know where they brought it from, but they brought a big crane down and they got it out the next day at low tide. They dug around it and put this crane on it and dragged it out. But while we're at the surf club, which is now the Memorial Hall, there was a couple of landing craft come in right in front of the surf club and they got these chaps out and put them on stretchers. And they took them up and put them into these vehicles which were right in front of the hall and they took them away. Well, they were apparently chaps who had injured themselves coming down the nets on the side of the boats. They weren't the ones that got down, drowned with the sand, uh, landing craft being caught in the waves. They were buried, of course, at Mackay's Crossing. And if you can think of Mackay's Crossing as it is now, as you come down the main road as it is now, it, on the west side, you'll see a little cemetery, which used to be the Pycock, was the Pycock Cemetery at one stage, but not many people in Pycock got buried there, bar the Mackays and a few Smiths and what have you. And that's where they put the Marines that actually got drowned, 10 of them, I think. And then at the, towards the end of the war, they took them out, up and took them back to America. But what I was going to say <coughs> was these landing craft, somebody hadn't done any, oh, I don't know, f any, I I in, any information or, or collected any information about the beach at Pycock. And that was one of the biggest troubles with Pycock. The other thing I wanted to say was and I don't know if anybody will up, be upset with what I'm going to say, is that I lived in Ocean Road, and my far, where I was born, and the property backed onto what is now the school ground. And behind my father's fence and the people next door, which was Sewell's, a builder that lived in Pycock for many years, was a hill. And on that hill, it was all lupin, quite high lupin. At any rate, they started to de level the ground for the school. And at that stage, Wellington Road finished at Ocean Road. There was a sand track across the paddocks to Myrie Street, which was up on the next corner where Pingow Street and that is. Well, this particular day, it was a, it was a Monday morning, and the bulldozers had finished and they started to come around and to go along our back fence. And it was our back fence and then the hill just went up like that. It wasn't a high hill, but anyway, the top of it had been levelled out by Smiths years ago, but they'd never farmed it much, so they, it, it had all overgrown. Well, all of a sudden there was all these screams. And I went out to have a look, and there was all these girls that were rushing out. I knew about it, of course. But they were <laughs> rushing out and running to, towards what is now Wellington Road, if you can think of Wellington Road going across. And what has happened was they had all these two-man tents in amongst the lupin bushes. <laughs> and being Monday, they were get, they, the girls should have gone back to town or back to Palmerston or wherever. <laughs> But the Americans had built this little, uh, well, I might say it might have been the first brothel in Pycock. <laughs> Ask Harry about it. Ask Harry if he remembers. Yeah. <laughs>